You're all set, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, James. I'll call the uh, Project Renovation Building Committee to order. Mr. Barron, please take the roll. Oh. Are there Barron, again? Would you please take the roll? Yep, Councilor Bedrico. I'm yeah. not hearing Councilor Bedrico. Yeah. All right, thank you. Councilor Minor. Here. Mr. Claffey, Mr. Mortensen. I think he's got Mortensen? on mute. He's got on mute. Okay. Well, I did hear him earlier, so he is present. Mr. Murtha. Eddie was here. Yeah. Mr. Woods. Mr. Woods is here. And Mr. Harpy. Here. You have uh, a quorum. Sorry, you. I just saw I was muted. Yep. This, uh, this meeting is being recorded. I'll entertain a motion for approval of prior meeting minutes, Mr. Mortensen. Mr. Minor, would you make that motion, please? They're both muted. Ed Murtha, I'll make the motion. Go ahead, Ed. I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes. Is there a second? Don Woods, second. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Woods. Any discussion on the minutes? Yeah, Joe, can I make one comment? Sure. This Frank is Frank and Downs. Frank and Downs. Thanks. Uh, I just want to note from the last meeting that uh, when I mentioned flagpoles would be moved off to phase two, I think it said light poles in the in the meeting minutes. So I just want to make that clarification. Okay. Thank you very much. So so noted. Uh, any other amendments to the motion? I'll entertain a motion to take the votes with the exclusion flags, not lights. I'll make that motion, Joe. Please. And Martha. Second, Rod Mortensen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously. Public participation. Do we have anybody in the queue, James? We do have Barbara in the queue. I haven't seen her raise her hand yet, um, but usually she's not. Okay. Hands raised. Unmute her. I was saying that was impressive. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Carver School of Code 275 Field Street. Um, I just wanted to make sure Zoom was working because it wasn't working for me last night. So. <laughs> oh. that, that's all I have to say. I'm just listening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Okay, uh, we'll get a project update from Frank of Downs. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Uh, so starting with the financials, giving you a snapshot in time where we are. As far as the contract is concerned, financially speaking, uh, starting with the approved changes from the last committee meeting, we're up to uh, $888,116.55. And that would revise our GMP value to $28,649,105.55. The, between the pending and the approximate uh, changes that we have compiled to date, that totals $29,702.86 which would bring the anticipated final GMP value uh, to $28,678,808.41. Taking a look at the CM uh, contingency with a starting amount of 831809 in approved changes towards the contingency, that value is 473,11858. The pending uh, changes towards CM contingency totals 31,230.15. That would leave uh, within the CM contingency, that would leave $327,460.27. 
Okay, taking a look at the owner's contingency, starting with 868405, based on a reconciliation with the town from January. Um, we're now offsetting that based on the amount of approved changes to date, which is 711,559.67. The pending changes that we are presenting this evening, that totals 24,592.36. And the approximate values of all the uh, changes that we have compiled so far, it nets to $5,110.50. That would leave uh, 127,142.47 within the owner's contingency. In terms of soft costs, I have nothing to report. Um, within the CIP funds, we had a breakout value, which was COP 154. That totaled 176,556.88. And that is actually captured uh, up above in the approved changes of 888-116.55. That brings the total project uh, budget value to $30,512.07. I'm sorry, $30,512,760. And the current uh, budget in place was the $28.8 uh, million. Does anybody have any questions on that so far? Frank, Joe Harpy, so uh, cumulatively between you and what's left in the con in the owner's contingency of roughly 455,000, round it off. Yeah, taking into account the CM contingency and owner contingency, yes. Okay, and the bottom number or the pro total project number, I would just remind the committee that 30 million plus uh, sustains that contingency balances as well as um, what you're holding back from the trade retention, correct? The retainage is, is part of the total value of the work. All right, are there any other questions of Frank on that? Okay, would you move ahead, please? Mm -hmm. Yes, taking a look at the schedule, giving you guys an update on uh, on work we've completed and what's coming up. And we're nearing the finish line, as you guys all know, with the turnover date of July 14th, the first uh, move-in date that we have, and we're coordinating that with the town directly. Um, taking a look at completed work, starting with some of the site work, looking at the north side of the project, which is the side closest to Cedar Street. We have final graded that, we've placed topsoil and we have plantings installed. Uh, we have the bituminous walkway set along the west side. That's the area between the old town hall and the new town hall. Um, that's installed. We have EFIS uh, sprayed on the east side entry and we have the cornice, which is uh, similar to what I call crown molding along that east entry that's installed, that mimics the crown molding along the top of the town hall and gymnasium. Uh, we've set the light poles and uh, light fixtures along Mazzacoli Way. We have all the doors and hardware on now around the perimeter of the building. Uh, we've got carpet completely done on the third floor, including the wall base. Uh, we've sent the final cleaners in last week. They've Final clean the third floor. That excludes the lobby because of the um, the elevator issues that we've had. We've left that area uh, protected still with temporary protection. We have final painted the uh, the second floor, and we've got some of the first floor done at this point. Uh, within the town hall, we've got most of the doors hung. Uh, certainly, second floor is complete. I believe we have one set of doors left on the third floor and uh, maybe a handful of doors left to hang um, on the first floor. Uh, within the grand hall, we've got most of the metal panel ceiling up at this point. We've left some metal panel down as we coordinate with the town uh, in terms of their data needs. We've left some panels out for that. The, uh, the sheet vinyl within the kitchen, that's the Parks and Rec kitchen, um, is complete. We have all of the cooling up and running now within the various uh, data rooms throughout the project. The community center uh, soffits 
are substantially complete at this point. The um, all of the ceiling, the grid work, and the cabinetry within the community center is now in place, uh, excluding the uh, the parks and rec kitchen. All the startup is done. We're actually in a in an air balancing uh, phase right now. All the obviously obviously all the mechanical equipment is started. The uh, dry cam system, that is the uh, fire suppression system for the vault, that is all now um, completed. Now, as far as work in progress goes, just moving down the list here. Jim, if you could scroll down for me. You know, you can see the bottom two. Yeah, I could see the first two bulleted items under work in progress. Oh yeah, go ahead with those because the next page is on the next slide. Okay, um, so we're in a final painting stage on the first floor. I believe we've got the town clerk's area uh, final painted and we'll just continue to move through the first floor um, this week. And then we'll be, we'll be getting into the community center very shortly, possibly by the end of this week or early next week. Um, Jim wiring, so we've got to uh, install lights. We're coordinating with the gym equipment vendor who's on site now. We have, I believe we have three out of the 14 basketball hoops in place right now. As far as the, uh, the maple flooring within the gym, we have about half of it nailed down and the other half is loose laid right now. And we expect to be complete with nailing the maple by the end of the week. The elevator is finally in progress. I'm happy to report we got ha we have guys back here installing, and we've set uh, the door frames um, on the basement level, the first floor and third floor. We'll finish that up uh, this week. We'll be into cab construction uh, next week. We placed most of the topsoil and landscaping. Um, I think we need to discuss this a little bit further to see how we're going to approach the rest of the planting, knowing that we may have some, some issues to contend with along the new sidewalk, which is the east side of the building around the uh, gymnasium bump out. The FRP panels in the kitchen, we have most of the FRP panels on in the kitchen. I think I mentioned the sheet vinyl is installed, the flooring is done but these are the wall panels. It's a cleanable surface. The health and health uh, department requires. Um, we've got most of that on. As I mentioned, we're into air balancing. We've completed the third floor. We're on the second. We'll be on the first floor very shortly. Uh, we've already started uh, some of the pre-testing associated with the fire alarm system. And then work on the horizon. We're coordinating with Quisenberry on doing punch lists starting at the third floor. <clears throat> um, I mentioned the final painting in the community center. We're almost there. Once we get through the first floor of the town hall, we'll be in the community center very shortly. We have a little bit of cornice work at the west entry. That's that crown molding um, component along the west entry, similar to the east. We've started some of that work already. And uh, we should be wrapping that up by the end of this week. Uh, taping the soffit. This is the underside of the exterior canopies at all of the um, entries into the community center. We've got some taping and painting left to do. Uh, the taping should start up this week and be into next week, followed with painting. And then we've got some odds and ends in terms of the uh, accessories. I refer to them as accessories, which would be the picture rail. We've got some picture rail to hang on the first floor and second floor. The chair rail is essentially done. Um, we gave this update on Monday, keep in mind, we've installed the chair rail in the council chambers. Uh, we do have some toilet paper and paper towel dispensers to get from the town so we can complete the toilet accessories We've got four fire extinguisher cabinets to hang, uh, mainly in the community center corridors. The interior signage is still in fabrication. Uh, we'll probably see that the week of July 6th. The food service equipment for the Parks and Rec Kitchen is coming on Friday morning, this coming Friday. And then we'll have some hookups to do to the various uh, pieces of equipment. 
The gym lighting I mentioned will coincide with gym equipment. We're looking to put the electricians in the gym very soon to start hanging uh, lights in there. Uh, we do have a balance of uh, building lights and cameras to do. We've got most of the building lights already uh, wired up and ready to go. Uh, come the middle of next week, we will begin to demobilize the temporary toilets that are currently set up along the south side of the project. And uh, we'll also begin to take down the temporary fencing that sets up the perimeter of the project that is uh, pretty much the first phase. All of that will start to come down and we'll, we'll be erecting the fence um, as we get ready for phase two of the project. The, uh, the final paving actually was completed yesterday. Uh, we'll begin line striping the parking lot tomorrow and we'll be putting up signage by the end of the week. We've got uh, site furnishings coming uh, next week sometime. By next week, we'll start the vault pressure test. I believe that's scheduled for early next week, followed by a vault certification. Fire lock will be coming back uh, for that. The water purification test, that is something that we need to do as part of the TCO requirement uh, with the local inspector. We'll be going through that. That does exclude the Parks and Rec kitchen. Uh, when we did review the Parks and Rec kitchen with the health department, they have made a requirement that we relocate one of the hand sinks within the kitchen. So that is going to delay completion of the Parks and Rec kitchen. We want to obviously get the purification test done for the rest of the building so we don't hold up uh, the tests for everything else. The generator startup and test, that's going to happen July 7th. And then really the week of July 6th is when we're going to be doing our final inspections and walkthroughs with the TCO expected by the end of that week. Uh, the flood tools I mentioned, because of the site constraints between the two buildings, the new and the old building, uh, we won't be able to set those flagpoles until the old building comes down as part of phase two. Anybody have any questions so far on, on schedule? Any questions of Frank? Okay, Frank, move on. All right, so other uh, critical items. You know, we've, we've talked about COVID and the impacts um, that it's had on the elevator. I, I think we're going to, I, hopefully we're going to luck out as far as the elevator construction goes. We've been keeping close tabs on the progress. We've set all the rails. As I mentioned, we've set some of the elevator fronts on the various floors. Um, we're confident at this point we can finish the elevator the week of July 6th. The testing and inspection uh, should be pretty quick. In a matter of days, we should be able to get that in time prior to uh, a TCO inspection. Um, some of the expediting, we just continue. Because of the electrical changes on this project, which is roughly uh, 500,000, and changes towards the electrical, uh, we are still playing catch up in the community center and gym. Um, and we've been working a number of Saturdays to uh, recoup some of the time as we focus efforts on um, basically completing change order work. Um, we do plan to work this weekend and probably the weekend after uh, July 4th we'll be working. Um, other items to discuss as far as uh, critical, there is going to be a, a post move-in uh, list of items to complete. And when I look at that list, I'm, I'm putting a list together, making sure I have everything captured. Um, the biggest thing I think is, is the gymnasium. Because of the delays we had associated with COVID-19 and the factory shutting down and reopening and getting material much later than we anticipated I can only put so many people in that gym um, and I do have to sequence work. I can't necessarily fast track everything. So the flooring, as I mentioned, is going down. The maple's getting nailed down by the end of this week completely. Um, and I have to get equipment done. Um, the flooring guy is gonna have to go away. He's gonna have to come back after the 
And then he's going to have some sanding and sealing and line striping to do. Um, that inevitably is going to push off the bleachers. Um, so we are talking about doing the rest of the sanding, sealing, striping, and bleachers beyond the uh, July 14th date. Uh, for sure, as part of uh, post movement. Um, and there's a number of other things that, you know, we can review. Like I said, I'm compiling a list. I mentioned the operable partitions because of the COVID-19 situation. Those, the factory that uh, fabricated those was shut down. It looks like, um, you know, we're dealing with some different dates for the operable panels. Again, not a TCO issue for those either, um, but we are looking at the third week in July to get the operable panels uh, for the second floor of the town hall. And then uh, third week in August to get the gym panels and the uh, panels for the multi-purpose rooms within the community center. Um, we have talked with the town and we've looked at a number of locations where we may have to relocate wireless access points and adjust security camera locations. So I could easily see that as, as part of a, a post move um, thing. We have some lights in the elevator that were added at the top uh, top floor in the town hall. We're tracking those lights, but it looks like those lights may come beyond the 714 uh, date, in which case we're prepared to put up some temporary lights if we have to, to pass an elevator inspection. Um, Mr. Chairman, other things, other things that yeah. we're tracking. Uh, Councillor Minor has a question. Nope. No, Joe, you can let Frank continue. I'll take it on the end. Okay, go ahead, Frank. Okay, I'm almost done here. Um, yeah, so so hydro seating, we thought it was in the best interest of the of the project to put this off just because of the weather we've been having, the humidity levels. I think we could certainly hydro seed now, and uh, may, maybe Don wants to comment, maybe not, but. Um, we could certainly hydro seed now, but uh, I think we're going to just be asking for trouble. I think we're going to get weeds and uh, we want to put this off till somewhere mid August to third week in August to pick, pick this up. And um, I think we're going to get a better product if, if we wait to do that work. Again, it's not going to hold any, anybody up or anything like that. Um, we've got some chief boxes. It's an AV box in the council chambers on the wall. There's, I believe there's three locations where uh, we understand that they're based on their locations, they're, um, they're not, they're not going to work. So the town has asked us to infill those locations. Um, so we have to come up with a, an option on how we can cover those on the wall. Either we cover them up with sheetrock um, they do get a wall covering on the, on the other walls. We can just go by with the wall covering and handle it that way. But we can talk about other options. Uh, there's some power for auto operators that wasn't originally specified. That's within NCTV. So we can talk about whether or not we, we do that work. Um, the town is also talking about some additional signage for the exterior of the building including interior locations. Um, we need more information before we can even um, quantify that. Uh, there's standby power for NCTV. We're working with the design team on that. Again, this is all um, added scope. There are a number of uh, cast stone panels that have uh, shrinkage cracks, basically. It's a cementitious product and we know that we have to cut in control joints. In fact, I had presented a change, I think it was a couple committee meetings ago where I had an approval to add control joints. That was for uh, roughly four locations. There's a number of other locations that we have to address and I'm gonna get to that. I have a COP with a rough order of magnitude, um, what we think it's going to take uh, financially to cover the rest of these locations. Uh, so I can compile this list formally. I can come up with some rough dates to give you an idea how far beyond I see some of this work happening, at least the, the work that I can quantify. Um, and then we can look at some of these other things that are out there 
and see you know whether or not it makes sense to address them knowing some of the budget constraints that we're up against right now. Chris, you want to ask your question now? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Frank, just a couple things. First off, to roll back to uh, the conversation regarding hydro seeding, I'm sure Don would agree that unless we've got some type of a water program that can go with it, we're better off to hold as long as we can. And then Joe, to see, I know that uh, there was some consideration on the library side. They had installed an irrigation system on the final town work, which would be on the east side of the parking lot, that seemed to have come in a lot better than the west side of the lot. And just looking to see if we can at least entertain looking into that as an option uh, through irrigation coming off the main building, if that's a possibility, Frank, or with Chris, just to look at that and see what the possible cost could be on that part. Uh, the second thing is on the council chamber on infilling, was this specifically designed for one product that the product was changed or how did that occur? Um, maybe uh, is, is Paul Bouton on the call? Maybe he can speak to that. Uh, at the moment, he's over across the building. I'll see if I can contact him and get him back on board for you. All right, because that was the only question I had with that, Frank, is to see if, you know, what, if it was just physical equipment size that was the issue or you know, what exactly the issues were that didn't allow it to be placed where it originally was placed. And then the, the last thing I had for right now was a question on the, uh, the TCO. Everything that you seem to have gone through in terms of this uh, final punch list or, you know, I'm going to call them minor changes. None of them are going to affect the move-in date or the operation. This would be, I'm presuming, either done off-peak or not non-intrusive work after they move in. Am I right on that? Yes, you are correct. Okay. And one final comment. I know we had talked about it initially in terms of planting locations on the south side of the building at the community center entrance that there was some discussion in terms of where those plantings should be, if there should be a reduction in the number of plantings. And you mentioned the east side walkway as well uh, to whether or not we're holding off on that until we've got final, final installation of sidewalks and then maybe not putting some plantings in. Is that correct? Yeah, although, you know, th that's my understanding based on conversations that we've had, but nothing's been formalized by the design team. So, um, you know. Did, I, the, did the walkthrough occur? Uh, I know I thought a few weeks ago the landscapers as well as the design team was going to go through and kind of do a, uh, a visual walkthrough now that the the building is basically carved out on the south side of the building to kind of get a better idea of potentially how it might look. Do you know if that meeting occurred or what the disposition was coming out of it? Yeah, we, we did do a walkthrough uh, with Quisenberry and there were um, there was representation from the town to review all the locations based on the original plans that we have. At that time, when we looked at the south side, um, you know, we had a lot of we had a lot of things going on there. We weren't final graded yet, so I think the consensus was to come back to that and look at it. Um, so it sounds like you know now would be a good opportunity since we are basically moving out of that area and final grading it. Uh, we can revisit that now and and see what we want to do as far as locations and as far as the sidewalk along the bump out. You know, I, I think it just makes sense based on everything that I've heard you guys talk about and concerns that we don't plant the trees there because we're so close to that sidewalk and it's just going to create a mess. Um, so maybe we just need to think about finding another location somewhere on site that makes more sense for those. I think it's only a couple of trees that uh, come into play there. Okay, because I know that that chokes down very tight, especially when you get to the corner. There's right. almost no room, and even as you you know transition further north, there's really not a lot of room to 
to put a tree in between the building and the sidewalk or on the tree belt in between the sidewalk and the road. I don't think there's any room. Right. Okay. All right. That's all I've got for now. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Miner. Any other questions? No, uh, Don Woods. Don Woods, please. I just me. want to agree with both Chris and, and Frank. Uh, if you don't have to seed uh, until the end of August, uh, that would be ideal. Um, I'm not sure. Is there irrigation there, or there is not There's irrigation? No irrigation there. So absolutely, be a huge failure with with these temperatures and uh, uh, the upcoming July and uh, uh, typical July. Uh, yeah, sea would be a failure without water. Thank you, Don. Appreciate your input. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Joe. These trees that ahead, that Eddie, you're talking about putting in. Ed Mercer, go uh, ahead. Please. If you put them in close to a sidewalk. Within 10 years, they're going to be cracking the sidewalks up. Uh, we got to take that into consideration, too. Okay, thank you, Ed. the types of trees. Yeah, I think for the most part, Joe, it's like, if I could go back with uh, Eddie, is they're definitely the, the trees that are being planted are ornamentals, so they're going to stay relatively compact. But if you start getting too tight, the yeah. canopy just is not going to be able to uh, grow properly. It'll be shaded on one side and very tight to the building on the other side. I just don't think it makes sense to put them in. If that's what the design team comes up with, I, I would agree to, to not plant them there and find a better location somewhere else. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hey, while we're on the subject of trees, just to close the loop on this, because we just had a discussion earlier about some yeah. other trees that were in close proximity to other sidewalk locations, specifically along the east side of the building uh, near the town hall entrance. Um, you know, we, we looked at those again, they're ornamental trees. Um, they're about eight feet off the sidewalk. And I think based on the, the tree type uh, and the width of that tree is like maybe 15 feet at full growth. They're three inch caliber trees. You know, the town has asked us to look into that because there is a concern that, you know, the sidewalks could heave at those locations, even being eight feet away. So we have to, I guess, take a closer look at that and see if it, if it makes sense to remove those trees at some point in time and relocate them. Okay, by, way, by way of clarification, uh, there was never in the plans to irrigate the area. Somehow it wasn't, uh, and we discovered it only a couple of days ago, or I asked the question a couple of days ago, was it irrigated? It isn't. But that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be considered a post closing at a specified time, because it, particularly the area that that is juxtaposed to uh, Cedar, that whole area on the, I guess that would be the north side of the building going east and west, will become the Goldilocks area, unless we have a lot of effort put in by, you know, older means of uh, irrigation. So that's, I think, something clearly that should be discussed and looked at. The other one, uh, quickly, uh, not to belabor, get lost in the, is the patio area, does that have, uh, did we preserve the historic view line that the current community center has to the park, that connection, or will it be trees that could have, if you're sitting on the patio or standing around the patio area, do you know at this point, Frank? Well, if you're if you're on the patio, there's a, a pretty significant grade change there. So it it you know you're you're down pretty low when you're on the patio and you don't have a clear view. Um, so will there be trees, trees there that will add to that lack of view? Is what I'm asking. Yeah, I believe there are. If I recall the planting plan correctly, uh, I believe there's a couple of trees that are um, called for called for there. <clears throat> okay, because I'd like to have that. If if it doesn't get too laborious to take a look at that, if we could. All right, go ahead, Frank. We'll move along, please. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, now looking at the COPs that we um, we want to present this evening for approval, starting with COP 197, we, um, we had to install blocking at a number of canopy locations. This is specific to the uh, community center. 
this was a piece of scope that was not in anyone's contract. And so it's part of a, part of the PM contingency with no increase to the GMP. So it's zero dollars. The next one is 225. Uh, this this is to add the uh, lighting at the third floor. This is to pass the elevator inspection. As I mentioned, um, we went ahead and released the lights, but it looks like based on the timing that uh, we may not see these lights by the time we need a TCO, in which case we're prepared to install something temporarily. We may have to come back and put these lights in unless, unless we can expedite these lights, which we're also looking into. Um, there is no expediting included with this. This is just the cost to furnish and install the lights. And there's a little bit of cabling in here um, to communicate with the elevator controller uh, with standby. The total for this is 4,078.48. Uh, 229 is to add cabinets for the second floor uh, mail room. There's a number of upper uh, and lower cabinets uh, specified in this change for that room. There was uh, nothing going in this room in the original scheme. That total is $9,198. Uh, 232 is to get power, all of the power that we need to accommodate the recirculating pumps um, in the basement for the hot water system. That total is $5,612.76. The next item is 234 to expedite the millwork. And again, working electricians on a Saturday, May 30th uh, within the community center. That's out of CM contingency funds for $0 increase to the GMP. Uh, 236 had to do with the layout of the porcelain tile within the grand hall. Uh, based on the tile that was specified, we um, the layout was not going to work. It was going to produce uh, joint lines that would have been unsightly. We had to go to a larger format tile um, for one of the tile locations, uh, not all of it. And this is just a material cost to get the larger tile for $1,221.12. Uh, COP 237. This is to get power to uh, VAB boxes just in the community center. It happens at four locations within the community center. It was not part of the other electrical revisions that we had for power to VAB units. That totals $2,995.53. Uh, 238 is uh, a more overtime. This is getting into June now, the beginning of June to expedite the rest of the vault electrical, um, finish the, essentially finish the building lights along the east side uh, to make way for topsoil and landscaping and getting the rest of the standby power done. It was approved in various COPs out of CM. This is all out of CM contingency for $0 to the GMP. 239 is to furnish and it's called a retractable ladder within the pit for the elevator due to the uh, constraints of the pit. We could not we could not install the originally specified elevator. It has to be retractable. We're just too tight um, to pass an inspection there if we went ahead with the with the ladder that we had. Um, so that's a, a CM contingency item, zero dollar increase to the GMP. Two forty three has to do with patching the roof uh, from uh, safety rails. We had a number of uh, locations where we had wood safety rails and those came out. Uh, we had to patch the roof. Um, that was really a sequencing thing. It wasn't part of anyone's contract. That's a contingency item. Zero dollar increase to the GMP. And 244, this was uh, some wood blocking we had to attach to exterior uh, framing so that when we put on the final uh, metal trim at windows, these are type A windows, exterior windows, the metal trim would be flush with the glass. We basically had to pad out the framing with wood to make it flush. Um, that totals $1,486.47. And when you combine all the COPs above, the total is $24,592 and 36 cents.
Are there any questions of Mr. Chairman? Um, Mr. Bicot is back if you wanted to address those boxes in the council chambers and Councillor Minor has a question. Yes, Chris. Uh, if, James, if you could just scroll back up to the top of this page just so I can get my numbers and all my paper copy in front of me. Whoa, thank you. All right, so the question I had for you, Frank, on a couple of them. One was 225. Was that something that was required by the state elevator inspection that didn't meet code, or how did that come about? Yeah, the, the lighting is needed to basically pass an elevator inspection. Um, and the, the cabling is just to make the uh, elevator operational. Okay, and I'm just looking to see if that was just not on the original plans or were the plans calling for a different elevator that we made a change and this didn't catch up to it? How did that come? Um, I think regardless of the elevator type, you still would have needed uh, these, these lights. It uh, wasn't part of the original plans. Okay, so is Mark on? Or is we just classifying that, you know? Yes, Mark Schweitzer, okay. Collier, yes. 225 is classified as an E&O. Okay. And then, Frank, on 229 on the cabinets, that was something that we just felt was necessary, just there wasn't adequate cabinets in that space, and we're looking at change on it? Yeah, so the only thing that we had relative to the mail room uh, was a mail sorter. We didn't have any cabinetry um, originally spec'd out for this particular room. All right. Is there any way to, to classify that on FF and E or no? <clears throat> Is that a question for Downs or for? Carl? Yeah, that's a, that's a question for either or. Yeah. Is that something we can classify FF and E versus construction? I would say since it's attached to the building, if you flip the building over, they would that wouldn't fall out, would it, Mark? So that would be part of the building. All right, so they're just going to classify it millwork? Yeah. yeah. All right, and the same thing, Mark, just real quick. On 232 on the extension as well as 237 for the VIV units. And, and two <coughs> Go ahead, Mark. Uh, those. Joe, Joe, did you hear I, I didn't hear the response. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have 232, 236, 7, and 244 in addition to 225 as any, you know. Okay. Thank you. That'll yep. shorten it up for everything else. And then real quick, if Paul's back on the line, if he could just explain what or how uh, we're making the changes in the council chambers regarding the, uh, the original AV equipment. The uh, the chief boxes is what we're talking about. Falls on the on the call now. Yes, I'm uh, I'm back. I just wanted to make a comment to uh, Councillor uh, Miner's uh, question regarding the uh, copier room. So the back history on that, and then Mark from uh, Collier should keep track of this as well. Is in the initial design phase, all copiers, all shredders, everything that was inside the mail room uh, was provided uh, to uh, the design team with regards to the equipment that we were bringing over. When we went over into the building, we determined that the room that was identified as the copier mail room was not of sufficient size to accommodate the equipment that we were bringing over. As a result, they had to move that to the new location uh, when they had to also uh, take a closet that was adjoining next to the fire marshal's office in order to make a mail room that could accommodate the equipment that we're bringing over. Uh, so I see that as a design issue that you may want to track uh, for EA and O. Okay. Any other questions on the uh, COPs for review and approval? Just the last thing was where we could go back while we got Paul is on the AV equipment for the council chambers. Uh, correct. So catching up on that, I had to run over to the, the new building as we were having the meeting. We had uh, my guys inside there working on some... Uh, uh, electrical uh, UPS uh, work. Um, so on that particular room, uh, Diagastino called for some chief boxes in some locations that 
uh, we could not make the audio visual equipment work. So with uh, Vision Point on board, uh, we used the uh, ones that we thought would accommodate uh, the, the room. And then we have three of them, uh, which we don't plan on utilizing. Uh, so we brought it up uh, to uh, a few individuals here as far as the attention to see how we want to treat those on whether or not we want to pull back the wiring on them or if we're going to put uh, plates on them and then covering them back up. But uh, again, we have to be code compliant with whatever we're going to do or to leave them there uh, unused. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, 24592 and 36 cents total of change orders. Mr. Mortensen? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I might add uh, just a general overview. This project has been excessive on change orders. We all know that the average is anywhere 14 to 20% or 32% of the original guaranteed maximum price. And yet, here we stand moving forward and getting the building done. So that's the good news. Only okay. by the grace of God. Let's vote on that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Frank. Yes, sir. Okay, so to give you a breakdown on the uh, the other changes that we're sort of working on behind the scenes um, that nets out to the 5,110.50, starting with COP 34, that's the credit that's still hanging out to deal with the general trades. Um, we, we said numerous times we we would hold on to this until we got through the scopes, and we're almost there. Um, you know, as soon as we get through, I think the gym equipment. And we're getting closer as we set more basketball hoops, um, getting closer. But we're going to hold that out there uh, right till the end. Uh, 216 is, is dealing with extending power potentially to open office locations. This is on the third floor. So depending on where the furniture lands, and that furniture, by the way, is expected to be delivered to our site um, by early next week. I had a discussion with the Board of Ed today about that. We're putting a rough order of magnitude on that if we do have to deal with extending power of uh, roughly $1,600. Uh, 228 is to add the canopy supports in the Grand Hall. Um, we're close on that to finalizing the cost. There's a rough order of magnitude of about 3200 for that. <clears throat> the feeder, there's a feeder repair within the building on the second floor. That was a uh, uh, damage. That's a contingency item to deal with that. So there's no increase to the GMP. 233 is to get power to a small range hood within the transition academy. It wasn't originally spec'd out. That's about 1600. Then there's heat trace, COP240. There's heat trace. Now that we've routed uh, drain piping to, uh, for roof trains, that'll be on the outside of the entryways. We need to make sure uh, those drain pipes don't freeze. And uh, this is to add heat trace uh, to ensure that doesn't happen for about 5,200. We've placed a rough order of magnitude on that. 245 is to continue working through um, the expediting of final termination, specifically the power to the community center and to swing the balance of the doors, frames and hardware as well within that entire space. Uh, 246 is a contingency item because of the sequencing that I mentioned earlier within the gym, um, because we are dealing with uh, sort of a, a bottleneck, if you will, within the gym now. We, we had every intention of putting in gym equipment ahead of the flooring. And now that that can't happen, uh, we have to protect that wood floor um, with a double layer of three quarter inch plywood um, because lift traffic uh, cannot go on that floor without some substantial protection. So the 246 is to deal with that. That's a CM contingency item. Um, the next item is crediting back some wall base. Uh, that's specific to the third floor. We basically went from a six inch high wall base in the open areas to a four inch high wall base. There's a small material credit we can give back to the town of almost a thousand bucks. Uh, 248 is to deal with the control joints at the cast stone panels. I think I mentioned that earlier. 
there's a rough order of magnitude of about 8,500. I'm trying to get that number down a little bit, somewhere around 7,000. Uh, 249 is to get standby power for NCTV. That was not part of the original scope. There's a rough order of magnitude of about 3,700 for that. And then uh, uh, 250, again, expediting whatever is remaining for electrical. We're calling this site lighting and doors. Um, 251 is the signage, additional signage. Again, I think I mentioned this earlier, we just need more design info if we want to even price this out. Um, I, I think we should price whatever, you know, if, if the town is looking to add some signs, we can see what it costs and then take a step back and, and see if it makes sense based on where we are with the budget. Uh, 252 is to get power for auto operators within the NCTV speed. There's a rough order of magnitude of about 3,000 for that, and that gets you to the roughly 5,100 uh, total. Is there any questions on that so far? Frank, on these uh, issues related to power, are we still under, or where, where do we stand on the building as a whole in terms of areas that are were identified early in the game as being unempowered or you know, under the power requirements to do certain things within the areas. I'm thinking of the community center in particular. Are, are these issues pretty much settled by what you're proposing here? Uh, so power within the community center, um, we've, we've learned very recently after this actually update was, was published, uh, Monday, I sent this out Monday, um, there may be potential for more power needed within the parks and rec kitchen that isn't, is not not captured here. Uh, that's, that's a discussion that we need to have with parks and rec to figure out exactly what they will require. And again, this is specific to um, the parks and rec kitchen and uh, some of the equipment that they want to install to serve food. We need to get a better handle on that. And, and figure out what the implications of that would be electrically. So would you say these were uh, underestimate, uh, underestimated uh, just as a result of a nuance of equipment we weren't aware of going in or they were estimated, underestimated in terms of requirements uh, in your original plans? Yeah, I, I just think that they, yeah, they weren't, they clearly weren't picked up um, in, in most, if not all cases. They just weren't picked up. I don't, see, I don't think you could say underestimated. They just weren't picked up at all. Picked up in the design yes. initially. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So Mark, of these items, maybe you haven't had a chance to go through each one of them. Do you see, um, Errors of omissions in any of these? If they were in the design criteria, it would be an omission. If it was not, if it was in there, the design criteria in the design, okay. then no, it's not an error and omission. Okay. Depends on Joe, the criteria. Joe, could I interject? Mr. Minor. Thank you. Just, I mean, you're getting down to the point now of the devil's being in the details. So, if now you're talking about specific equipment that has specific power requirements that wasn't initially identified as being in there, then it's really not an E and O situation. It's, it's just a change order, and hopefully we can you know mitigate some of those to you know really identify what we absolutely need versus what would be a nice to have and kind of go from there. But that's a uh, that's this is the point where that type of thing begins to become identified as you're about ready to close out. Yo, Rod Mortensen. Mr. Mortensen. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the appropriate time or not, but as I'm looking at all the change orders we've done, we include the, uh, if these uh, COPs, the, uh, the rough order of magnitude ones come about and we're saying it's about $5,000 to your point to begin with, where we'll have between the owner's contingency and the construction manager's contingency about $450,000. Am I correct in that? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So with that in mind, as we're getting down, as Chris was just saying, down to the end of the project, somewhere officially needs to start looking Breaking up a little rod. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think the committee needs to start looking at things like, well, there was no irrigation included in the project. And I'm assuming if we were going to do irrigation, it wouldn't be just for that uh, north side of the project we're talking about that's going to get hydro seeded. So when we're looking at things like that and anything else we have to do, we need to get some idea. I have no idea whatsoever. Got to go right to the mic again. Hear me, Joe? Getting a tapping. I don't know who's tapping, but not me. Go ahead. Um, getting ahead, some kind of idea of what we're including on what might be coming back to us on some of these emissions. You know, I I have no idea where we stand here, and you know, we still got a. I'm, the, the new building is getting almost done, but we have to remember we're still taking down the, the monster next door to it and don't know what we're gonna run into. And we don't wanna be caught with our, our pants down, so to speak, running out of cash. And I don't know how we do that, but. Um, well, I will tell you, and Frank could elaborate on this. He's got the uh, Quisenberry carries working on a, a punch list. Okay. And that punch list will highlight these various areas uh, and create a list of uh, things that can be evaluated by the project committee and then certainly by the committee as to what would be considered post-construction. The funding source of those, to go to your point, would be the question because we cannot overspend what the voters approved on the bond issue. We've already gone through 1.5 million of CIP money that the council put away I will tell you, I had a discussion, a lengthy discussion with the finance director. She's drawn down 24 million of the bond. She spent 19, a little over 19 million. Uh, then she's uh, reserved a portion to be consistent with Frank's numbers to finish the project. And then there is money left over after that. Um, it's a fairly significant number, but I would want to analyze it further before I throw it out for public discussion. But the money is there. The question is, you know, what we want to do with it. We are approved for the grant. Uh, the grant will come in shortly after the project is approved, I'm told, in my discussions with Quiz and BR Kerry. I don't know the exact number of that grant. Some people say 740, some people say million nine. Uh, Mr. Monick says it's around a million dollars, but there will be a significant amount of money coming back from that. And then there's Mark's list, which uh, would bear some discussion of how the town would want to proceed to uh, look at the numbers that it feels that it's owed from the list that Mark is putting together. So all in all, Rodney, it's a good question. We would say we would be okay, but we'd have to be very frugal and have a discussion. Uh, here's what it is, town of Newington. Uh, you know, do you want to do this uh, or not okay. on specific items of the uh, post-construction list, which will be generated from the punch list that uh, Quisenberry or Kerry's working on with Downs. We're all thinking about it in the back of our minds, but it's just yeah, it's really. Thank you. So if I could just interject one more thing, if I could, quick. just just want it to be on the record that, you know, what we're experiencing right now in terms of, you know, is, you know, it's a very common practice. It happens. You're talking about drawing a very large scale project. There, there are legitimate errors and omissions occur. And to deal with it at this point is where we start to draw it down and start to finalize as the architects are you know, receiving final uh, financial obligations due from the town, that these are the issues that are identified at this point. So it's not anything out of the realm. And I don't think we've come across any ENO that to me has been just overbearing and overwhelming that I, I think we're actually in a relatively good place that we're to this point. And I think we're also trying to be conscious of watching every change 
to whether or not it's a requirement or a desire. And I think we've done a pretty good job as a committee to date to do that. Okay. Um, any other questions on those items? I just, I just want to say, Joe, Frank from Downs, um, you know, Rod, Rod hit the nail on the head earlier when he mentioned, you know, the next phase of this project. We talk about post-construction, but we still have to think about phase two and getting through demo and not really knowing what we could potentially uncover there with some of the abatement and demo, especially as we rip off, um, you know, masonry from the police station and how we're going to put that back. Um, we just have to keep that in the back of our minds when we go to look at this post-construction list of things that we want to address or, you know, make other enhancements to the building that uh, we got to get through the rest of this year and deal with phase two and see where we're at after that. Absolutely. And that's something we've discussed uh, yeah. numerous times. We know we have a, a fixed price on that, but we had surprises before uh, on the initial uh, site work. That's for certain. So we want to be cognizant of that. But I want to assure you that the finance director is on top of this. And she's done a great job on the management of the bond issue. And um, she's right in line where we need to be to finish this project. I'm talking about the new building and the other piece of it uh, based on the money that she has put aside for the finish and even an escalation of that. So I'm quite comfortable looking at those numbers unless it's something so elaborate that our dinosaurs have pop up. I think we should be fine. I'll go out on a limb on saying that because I've seen the number and I'm happy to share with the committee and the public, but I would want to talk to her first about it to make certain uh, that she's still comfortable with those numbers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barron. Yes. Consider to take action on any fund transfer, sir. Any fund transfers required? Yes, I'd be looking for a transfer of twenty-four thousand five ninety-two and thirty-six cents from the owner's contingency account three one one zero nine nine one two to construction account three one one zero nine nine one one. Mr. Mortensen, so moved. Second. Second. By Mr. Minor. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimously passed. Thank you very Thank you. much. So done. Thank you. Go ahead, Frank. All right. I believe uh, we've got some progress photos to go through. We can uh, put yep. them up on the screen now. Okay, so you're, you're basically looking at a finished product of your town hall in this, uh, in this photo. This is the um, entrance along the east side, closer to the library. Um, you know, obviously you see this monstrous uh, box in front of the building. That's your generator and its temporary location. I just wanna uh, mention that that's temporary that will relocate after we demolish the old town hall. Um, we've got topsoil down. You can see the plantings. This photo was taken on Monday, so it was before we final paved, uh, but we are final paved um, at this point. Go to the next photo. And that's the other entry. On the other side, I mentioned the, uh, the cornice that will run along the top of that entry. Those pieces are actually installed now. And uh, <clears throat> that'll get sprayed with EFIS. The top band will get sprayed uh, tomorrow. We we'll hope to wrap this up by the end of the, uh, this week, early next week. Um, and that's pretty much it on this photo. All right, in this photo, just another shot along the, uh, the east side, a little bit further down, you can see the, uh, the food pantry entrance a little bit further off in the distance there. Plantings are in where you've got topsoil. Next photo. And just a, a outlook on uh, Mazzacoli towards Garfield. Again, in this shot, we were getting uh, ready to final pave. We had all this cleaned up. That's your stair. We spent a lot of time uh, over in this area just because of the uh, 
the, the tightness of this area, um, dealing with that. And we finally got to placing this stair <clears throat> on the south side of the gymnasium. And there's a shot of the community center along the south side. You can see the, uh, the black top. That's the temporary walkway that we are, um, that we've installed as part of the initial phase. In the final phase, we will be, we will be installing a concrete pathway there. <clears throat> and just a little bit further down, same elevation of the community center. Just a little close up, you can see the building lights around the community center. Um, you can see right in the, in the, in the foreground here, the soffit, the soffit work. I mentioned some taping. We've got to tape some joints uh, on that soffit and we'll be painting that hopefully next week. And that's just the close up of the, uh, the main entry again on the east side, the, um, the letters, the town hall, uh, letters will be on the face of that entry. Those letters are in fabrication. We just reviewed samples with the design team today. Um, so they will be a satin black finish to match uh, some of the, you know, some of the black trim that goes around the building. And that is a final product of the uh, third floor. We put that carpet down, we based you can see some equipment sort of in the background. Um, again, this was taken Monday, so we were air balancing and we have since finished air balancing on this floor and it's pretty much ready for furniture. It's been final cleaned and I mentioned furniture is coming uh, early next week for this space. Another shot, uh, same floor, we're still on the third floor, just looking at a copier area. We pulled all the protection off the cabinet so you can see the finished counter space. Typical uh, office area, I believe uh, this is a conference room looking out onto uh, Cedar Street, third floor. That's the kitchenette again on the third floor. All we have to do is strip and wax uh, the, the flooring, which we plan to do shortly. That shot is, uh, is the elevator. That's your elevator shaft. I know it's, it's not the greatest photo. It's hard to see progress in this photo. But, um, behind this orange netting uh, are the rails for the elevator cab. So those, those rails have been set all the way up. And as I mentioned before, um, if I were to take photos today, you'd see the um, elevator fronts uh, constructed on, uh, on three of the floors so far. Uh, this is a finished uh, shot of the food pantry area. You can see the the uh, the floor has been sealed, sealed concrete, and final painted. Base is on. Um, everything's pretty much ready for for moving in this space. Other than a final clean, which we'll we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing a final clean of the second floor next week. This is uh, human services. Again, we've still, we're still protecting uh, the floor here. Um, this has all been carpeted. There's some offices uh, within this suite that's all been carpeted at this point. This is the second floor uh, conference room. Not much left here uh, for us to do other than pull up protection and uh, do a final cleaning in here. This is the building department suite. This is, uh, this again, this was taken Monday. Um, so this all has carpet at this point and uh, we will get wall base on this week and this will be ready for final clean come Monday. And this is just the hallway coming off that building department suite. You can see their kitchenette to the left. And again, this has all been carpeted now wall base will commence very shortly. That's a typical bathroom set up on the second floor and uh, you can see partitions are set in the next photo. There's a shot of the vanity with mirrors. 
And we're just down to, uh, I think I mentioned it before, just some odds and ends in terms of accessories. We do need from the town the uh, paper towel and toilet paper dispensers. And that'll pretty much wrap up the bathrooms other than a final uh, wipe down and mop of the floor. That is the second floor lobby of the town hall. Uh, again, just uh, some cleanup, obviously, uh, pulling up the protection. The guy on the ladder is just doing some final uh, electrical above the ceiling. We'll close all that up next week. Uh, we've got the entrance mat carpet that goes in that vestibule. So that'll go in very shortly. That's just a finished shot of your stairwell. That's your main stairwell that comes off the, uh, the grand hall on the first floor. We've pulled up all the uh, protection. And that's a close up shot of the uh, grand hall. You're standing in the hallway there looking into the tax collector's uh, office. You can see we've, we've pulled up some protection, exposed some of the millwork. Um, you can see the final painting, uh, the dark color above the porcelain wainscoting um, is complete. That's a picture of the vault. You can see that uh, we've we put in all the fixtures. We've sealed the floor. In the uh, the right hand corner, you can you can barely make it out, but that's the uh, the tank for the dry chem system. That's your fire suppression system. So next week we plan to go through the testing, the final testing and certification. Uh, this is a shot of uh, basically a finished space within the NCTV suite. This is the hallway that kind of leads down to the uh, production studio, which is the next photo, I believe. That's finished uh, space basically of the, of the production studio. Just clean it, really just clean up left to do there. Um, that's a, a typical gang bathroom. Everything done aside from some minor toilet accessories and final cleanup. And that's a picture of the gymnasium. Uh, again, you can see the, uh, the maple that I mentioned earlier. Um, this section of the gym, the maple has been nailed down and it's loose laid a little bit further south, kind of off the page. And uh, at this point we do have gym equipment uh, hanging. Um, it wasn't in this photo, but we do have three basketball hoops up at this point. And that is a shot of the Transition Academy. Again, we're kind of limited on space. So some of this material is actually uh, gym equipment material that we have staged in here. Uh, but aside from that, you know, pretty much everything is done in here. The floor is protected, but all the, the flooring is done. Cabinets are in. Uh, we just finished the uh, window sills. Um, that work is, was completed. You can see the lights are on, ceilings are done, and same thing here. Uh, this is the daycare. Um, you can see the finished cabinetry, finished backsplash. We'll be into this room very shortly, cleaning it out, getting ready for finished flooring. And that's one of our carpenters working on the FRP panels, the, uh, the wall panels within the Parks and Rec kitchen that goes on the perimeter of the space. We're essentially done with the FRP at this point, other than uh, the one wall where we need to relocate one of the hand sinks based upon um, the health department's review of that space. Well, I have your photos. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Frank. Any questions on the photos? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, any other business pertinent to the committee. Chairman. Uh, Chris, I'm sorry. Mr. Miner, I have a question. Yes, Chris. No, we could just close it out. And I just had a couple things I wanted to circle back on that, Joe, you had brought up and we had touched on uh, initially was 
first of which, once the plantings are installed, and the building is accepted, we own the plantings. And I would just ask if it's possible. I know uh, there was some consideration to it. If we could cost out the irrigation system to see what that would potentially cost to do it either freestanding or tied into the library. However, it's the most economical to do, number one. And number two, I just wanted to touch on the planting concerns with Don in terms of the ornamentals that are planted up in the, it would be basically to the right of the human services entrance on the root concerns on those, if that is a legitimate concern or if it's not that much of a problem being an ornamental, I'm just curious to Don's thoughts on that. What is the, I don't have the plan in front of me tonight. What, what are the ornamentals? Does anybody know? They're uh, Corinthian little leaf linden trees. Okay. They, they grow to about 45 feet in height and they're about 15 feet in diameter. And, yeah. uh, a linden, in my estimation, really isn't an ornamental. That's kind of a major tree, but a minor major tree. And I'm not sure what your question, what is your question, Chris? Your question? The prox proximity to the sidewalks. I know there was some concerns based on another situation on a different property. I think it was Senior Center had uh, some disruptive uh, growing habits that uh, got into a sidewalk, even a sidewalk. I would definitely concur that if they're going to be matured at 40 feet, that that's something that probably should be further away from, uh, I think it's eight, 10 feet from the sidewalks. But just to look at that, it would definitely be a concern to, to move them now. But definitely in the fall, that might be something uh, to consider. Well, I mean, typically lindens are not a locust or even the oaks are a little bit more runners as far as root systems go. The, the linden, uh, how far is it from the sidewalk? Eight feet, you're saying? Well, eight feet, Don. Uh, honestly, I, I don't see it as a major threat, quite frankly. Okay, that's why I defer. That's why I deferred it to you. That's your forte, not mine. Yeah, I mean, if it was a a, a locust, yes, or even some of those pin oaks, they they tend to be hazardous near sidewalks. The oaks, in particular, because of the branch structure. But honestly, that's pretty typical layout. What I'm looking at right there. Okay. All right. Yeah, that would just to make sure we're not having an issue down the road. Just trying to cover our bases now. And then the other thing, Joe, like we were saying, is it possible to have that uh, irrigation system at least priced out to see what it might look like? Uh, Frank? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we can, okay. we can look at some Because otherwise, I think we're going to be looking at uh, plantings that are not going to do well if they're not being maintained properly. And with this being, uh, you know, the new flagship for Town Hall and the recreation center, I think it's important. It should be aesthetically pleasing for a long time to come. Thanks. It was a late catch, but better to catch it than not catch it. So. Um, right. Absolutely. Joe, can I ask Frank a question? Don Wood, yes, sorry. Frank, absolutely, John, you go ahead. Um, who's responsible for uh, the growing, Frank? Is it the contractor or the town? No, it's it's the contractor. Um, yeah, that's right. We, oh, we there, is a, there is a growing period, uh, you know, based on the specifications. Um, I think we have to revisit this. I have, you know, have to go back and look at the spec, but I think we owe like revisiting the plantings next year. And, uh, it, it, you know, there is, there, there isn't a, it, not all the liability is on the town. It's, it's, it's more on the contractor for the initial growing period. Yeah. I think typically it's a year, at least for, for yeah. us, sometimes longer, but typically. I believe that's, I believe, right. I believe that's what it is. It's either a year or 18 months. Uh, look at the spec. Okay, thank you. All right, the other thing, just real quickly, Joe, if there's any plantings that we're potentially taking as deducts, if there's any way to offset the potential expense of uh, doing an irrigation system, maybe there's, is there a, a well, potential um, offset there, Frank? Frank is going to come up with something yes. on that. He's been looking at that. Yes. Okay, perfect. And the last thing, and I won't say anything else, uh, is it possible to get the committee through as we're closing out for just a walk through together? Because this has been a long road. And Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've, I've uh, talked to members individually and 
it's always been an open invitation, but we can certainly try to schedule everybody in collectively. Certainly, yeah. that's, I think that's, it'd be nice, nice to do plan. a final walkthrough. Yeah, that's on the plan to do, and suggested by Don's. So we'll certainly do that. All right. And the last thing is, with I believe our last scheduled meeting with the old town hall, is there a possibility of doing an in-person meeting? Say that again. I'm sorry. No problem, Joe. Is there a possibility with our next meeting, Jeff? What's our next potential date? Um, July 8th and July 22nd. Well, so theoretically, the 8th, is it a possible to do an in-person meeting in the existing town hall? There's a final meeting there. I, I would leave that up to the town manager's call. Uh, if he's not comfortable with it, we wouldn't move it. But Okay. I We'll talk to him. Yeah, about the town hall is still closed at this point in time, but as long as we practice social distancing and so forth, uh, conceivably you could, but you would want to be um, further apart. You would not uh, want to And that's again, anybody that would want to be there. If you don't want to be there, by all means, there's all the ways to participate with Zoom and everything else. But I'm just thinking from the standpoint of it being almost one of the last dates before what's the right. closeout date for the town? Uh, Frank, in terms of final final out for the town. Well, there's so there's a move in period uh, based on the the schedule that we've got. It starts on the on July 14th, and I believe we have 10 days allotted in the schedule to account for the move in period. Um, so the 14th through the 24th. You know, hopefully the uh, next stage of opening, at least in Greenland, I guess. I guess. Have control of the virus, hopefully, and uh, we'd be open to doing that. But again, I'd want to see how administration feels about it. I'm all okay. for it, but I'd like to check with them. All yeah. right. And the other so thing that's I'm not sure is ours, Joe, is is there consideration to acrylic screening on the service windows? I know this would probably be on the town, not on downs, but have we talked about that yet? Do you know? No, we have not in front of me. I haven't had that discussion anyway. Okay, because I know the library had started to do some modification on their facility, and I think this is probably something that we might, at least on the administration side, to make sure they're touching on. I don't know if uh, Paul's still on the line or not, but as the rep, maybe to make sure we're at least looking at that. Okay, well, why don't we do this? We're going to have the punch list. The punch list is going to get... Uh, viewed by the project committee and then the project committee will bring it to the full committee and on that will be these kind of items and uh, we'll rank them by priority and must do be nice to do or can't do and we'll go from there perfect yeah, thank we, you we uh joe we, the frank this frank it downs we so we might have two separate lists uh and uh, what you know a lot of what we're talking about really can't be considered punch list um, it would be outside the scope of the project. Right. I, don't know, I don't know if Procore is tailored to deal with both on the same list. So, well, then I think I would consider many of these ad alternates uh, that are going to be done post construction mm -hmm. and then delete or add from there. We know where our limits are on the bond. Uh, Rodney made a good point. We know what our capital's left to on equity. Um, contingency, we know roughly that that grant will come in, but um, that doesn't limit our ability to uh, do anything uh, with the current situation. We want to be careful. I know that's redundant, but we've been careful as we can throughout the project. So whatever terminology Procore is comfortable with, Frank, let me know. Okay. <clears throat> Gail, did you have anything you'd like to say? Um, no, I was just, I mean, it's not really um, critical, but I was just curious as to um, if you actually have, well, you must have the department schedules um, laid out for like, who's the first department moving in? You know, what's this? Can you give us a little rough estimate? Yeah, so sure. we're, we're obviously working with the town. Uh, Je we're coordinating directly with Jeff Barron. Um, so I, I know that we've got moves happening in base, basically three different waves. So starting on the 14th, 
there would be a couple departments moving in on the first floor. <clears throat> and then we also have the third floor as part of that July 14th move. Um, the second floor is the 20th. Yes. And then the community center uh, would follow on the 23rd. Did I get that right, Jeff? Yes, you did. Okay. Huh. Anything else? Community center and all the remaining first floor offices. Yep. Okay. Is that covered for you, Gail? At this yeah, point? no, it's just because I heard some um, people mm -hmm. talking yesterday. I was just kind of curious. Huh. Eddie Martha, did you have anything to add? I don't see him still online with us. That's fine. All right. Comments by committee members. I think we've gone through that. I would just say in terms of the demo, uh, which is a positive, the former facilities manager remediated quite a bit of what turned out to be the uh, transition academy area, of course. Uh, and he also remediated a good portion of the community center uh, the gym area and the ceiling because it was a relatively young new roof on that area. So I think that's clearly important in terms of the level of percentage. And we also, um, the crawl spaces don't have to be all busted up and taken out. It can be covered. So I think that puts us on a pretty good trend unless there's, as I say, some Dracula living underneath the soil. But anyway... I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, you still have public participation. Oh, I'm sorry. And Mr. Minor does have his hand up. I don't know if he still has a question. Just go ahead if you got anybody on the public side first. Just one final comment. That was it. Okay. Uh, is it Barbara? Barbara is still on that side. Uh, she hasn't raised her hand to indicate she wishes to speak at this time. Okay. Give her a second. She has. Just a moment. I'll unmute her. I am all set. Thank you. I appreciate the hold up. Okay, Barbara. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm prepared to entertain a motion to adjourn, but Mr. Minor, your question. Just one final question for Frank. What is the hard out date for the town in terms of the final moving period? Is there a period after that where there's a hard out date? The reason I'm asking is just some of the FF and E that is left behind may have salvage value and just looking to see how much time there is or is not to consider that. Um, well, as I, as I mentioned, the, you know, the 24th was really the, the move out date, right? And then we, we basically take it over uh, the following week, but, you know, we, we can be flexible. I mean, I, I can't give too much leeway, but, we, we can be flexible if there's certain areas you guys um, want to take a closer look at uh, within reason, of course. Right. Joe, that's just something to consider. It might be a discussion with, uh, with the town manager. I don't know if there's been avenues pursued yet in terms of what to do with our uh, FF and E that's being left behind, but there may be some salvage value to that. And it might be at least worth considering. I know Transfer Enterprises is one that comes right off the top of my head that would potentially come in and you know buy everything and you know leave whatever they didn't want behind. Yeah, the uh, the town is offering its uh, extra furnishings, furniture, and equipment to nonprofits for them to come in and take as they need. Um, however, the, as Frank has noted, the time to do that is extremely limited for them, but it is being offered to them through human services that is already in place. Okay. If I may also, my understanding from the town manager, this is Beth, I'm sorry, Beth Del, you know, um, my understanding is that uh, they did reach out to a few different companies or vendors, Chris, and the cost of essentially having someone come and take it was more than what it was worth. And so looking at nonprofits made more sense. I know, uh, the Newington Children's Theater is going to be utilizing the auditorium seating. So we were really pleased that a community organization could do that. Um, and we're hoping that we can help out other uh, nonprofits as well. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, well, that sounds wonderful. Very good. 
All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second, please. Second. Second by oh. John Woods. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, John Boyd.